Greetings, ladies and gents. I hope you're all doing well this fine, fine Friday. With items still needing to either be sold or returned on the auction house, our 30 minute challenge is on hold until Monday because I want it to be concluded properly. I've still got lots of notes and things and such to write down. So, in its place today, I thought we'd take a look at something we spoke about way back last week, which was the Mega Money Maker Easy 12,000 per hour. And I did say, and it's part of the 30 minute challenge video, that I was going to look at this separately. So, Let's take a look at it. Welcome to Gold BS, where we take a look at those amazing gold videos and guides and see if they're true and actually worth your time or full of gold standard BS. I'm trying to work this gold BS angle in. Just work with me, okay? Today we are looking at Raw Gold LFR Farm 8.2. Dun dun dun. Now we're going to be jumping around a little bit with this one. And something to note is there is a chance, depending on how fast you complete these dungeons, whether you've done uh, other dungeons on your accounts, if you've done your M Plus or whatever, then there is a chance you're going to hit the 10 instant limit with this, uh, as that is account wide and not per character. So that is something to bear in mind, because as I say, I'm not exaggerating when I say we are going to be jumping around a lot. So we're going to be starting in Drenor in our garrison. Nice and easy, we have our garrison hearthstone. Now, in our garrison, we have a friendly person that once spoken to. And I'll put a link in the description down below so you can see exactly where they are at which stage of your garrison for the Alliance and the Horde. Because obviously I play Horde, so I don't know the Alliance one, but link is in the description. So, once you've spoken to this orc human, then they will take you to the various LFR wings that are available for Warlords of Drenor. So, let's look at Phase 1, the Garrison. We will be doing Archimonde's Fall, Destructor's Rise, Bastion of Shadows, and the Halls of Blood. And finally, the Iron Assembly. Now, all of these will only take about 8 minutes. Yeah, not bad. Netting you 159 gold, 56 silver. That's raw gold. Upon selling everything, so all of the loot that we've obtained from doing that, we're going to add on to that another 1,238 gold, 26 silver, giving you a total of 1,397 gold and 82 silver. Not bad for eight minutes' work. Now, depending on whether you're a mage, whatever your class may be, we need to head all the way to Pandaland. Yep, I'll meet you over there. So we need to head inside the Seat of Knowledge. That is the large building. If you've done your cloak quest, you'll know you have to go and speak to Lord Walker Chow in there. We'll give you all sorts of various quests. But it's between, it's the big building between the Order Hall for the Alliance and the Order Hall for the Horde. This may well be phased for you. We have spoken about this before. There is a young lady with a shaft of light coming down upon her that we need to talk to. She will phase... Us from the Nazoth instance or the Nazoth phase of Veil of Eternal Blossom and turn it back into the Mr. Pandaria version. Once we've done that, if we go back inside, we will see the three pandas have appeared. The furthest one that we talk to will gain us access to LFR. So the first LFR wing we shall be doing will be the Dread Approach. In there, we'll be killing all three bosses. We'll then be doing Nightmare, again killing all three, then Terrace killing all four, Guardians killing all three. Lastly, we have the Forgotten Depths and the Underhold killing one boss each. And these will take you a lot longer. There's RP and just various, they're, they're larger um, than our previous WAD counterparts. They're taking us a grand total of 23 minutes, 15 seconds. The raw cash gained from this low was 952 gold. 10 silver sales from the loot that we gained etc gave us another 2275 gold 23 silver making the impressive haul of 3227 gold 33 silver now at this point we are going to need to slow things down because we don't want to hit the cap so we are heading all the way back we're heading all the way back to our garrison Yep, our hearthstone should be off called. And now we're going to head back to the garrison. And we are going to head to the Iron Docks and to Everbloom. Both of them are in Gorgrond. If you've got the towers there, you'll be able to teleport to Gorgrond. If not, it's just a bit of a flight. 
Yeah, so that may reflect travel time. That will change that somewhat for you. Now, both of these are going to be run on Heroic. Iron Docks is first up, taking us 13 minutes and 19 seconds. Raw Cash was 98 gold and 54 silver. And the loot sales added another 299 gold and 4 silver, giving us 397 gold. Everbloom was much quicker, being 7 minutes 17 seconds. I will add, I did kill the spider in Everbloom, so if you want to skip that, you're probably saving yourself ooh, another couple of minutes there. It does take a long time to do that. So, yeah, if you wanted to make it faster, skip that. The raw cash we gained from doing Everbloom was 89 gold, 88 silver. Looted gold sales. How do you want to word that? It's 560 gold, 77 silver. Rounding out the Everbloom at 652 gold, 65 silver. Now, at this point, you may want to take a wild guess where we're heading back to. <gasps> yeah, we're, <laughs> we're heading all the way back to Mr. Pandaria. We're going to be doing two more LFR raids there. We are doing Lishen with two kills. And last of all, we are doing the last Zandalari stand. One kill, job done, nice and quick. Four minutes, 43 seconds, raw gold, 187 gold, 94 silver. Looted items sold, adding another 512 gold, 38 silver. So we are done for the one hour run. It took me around 59 minutes to do all of this. Now granted that is without travel time. Also, I am writing things down between kills, so I may be a little slower than most, but I would say above and beyond the hour run, I would probably add still 10 to 15 minutes for travel. Unless you're a mage, you're able to port around a little bit quicker. So let's take a look at the summary for these four phases. In total, we made 6,375 gold and 70 silver, way under the 8,000 to 12,000 gold that was stated in these guides. Bear in mind, this guide is from 8.2, so it is calculated after the nerfs. Obviously, beforehand, we used to get a lot more gold from bosses, 250 gold, plus now we get like 25 gold from a boss. So it has been substantially nerfed, but this should be factored in already to the calculations that were done by people that have recommended this guide. Is this a total loss? No, by no means. I think dropping Iron Docks and probably also Everbloom um, after phase two, spend the time doing maybe your Mr. Pandaria world quest dailies for you know the Nazoth invasion. Uh, that will push you beyond the risk of being locked out and save you having to jump again to Wall of the Drenor. Then just go and finish up phase four where you, you know, that would give you about 5,325 gold, 47 silver for 30 minutes of farming, plus whatever you would gain from doing your dailies. And your dailies would be out of the way. Win-win. As far as I'm concerned, that is a win-win. Now, we are not 100% finished with the guide. It also suggested running an extra three Miss Pandaria heroic raids, taking another 30 minutes. Again, without travel time. We're not LFRing at this time. We are actually going to have to go to the entrances. So there will be travel time no matter what. We will be doing the Terrace... A little uh, easy for me to say. We'll be doing the Terrace of Endless Springs, the Heart of Fear, and Mogashan Vaults. So let's start with Terrace. It takes 5 minutes, 20 seconds. Does not take long at all. Nice straight line run. Raw gold, 208 gold, 99 silver. Loot sales netted us another 684 gold, 93 silver. Totaling... 893 gold 92 silver i will say with these pets drop a lot and if you get the opportunity cage it up sell it on the auction house it's a nice bit of bonus extra cash there the heart of fear is next taking almost 10 minutes at 9 minutes 57 seconds raw gold a decent amount 550 gold 52 silver and gold from loot giving us 928 gold 91 silver totaling 1000 479 gold and 43 silver. Last of all, the Moggy Vaults. Yes, the Moggy Vaults. 13 minutes, 48 seconds. We do have some RP in there, so nah, we're kind of, we're at the beck and call of, you know, the fates and that. Raw gold, 410 gold, 29 seconds. Loot sales giving us another 846 gold, 71 silver. Giving us a total for Moggy of 1,257 gold. Dead on the money. 
These extra runs are what's pushing us into the 8,000 to 12,000 range, but it adds another 30 minutes. So we're now at one hour, 30 minutes of these runs. Now these extra raids are what's pushing us into this 8,000, this mythical 8,000 to 12,000 range. But it's not within the hour. We're adding another 30 minutes on. And even with all that, we still only gain 10,000 gold. It's not a tiny amount, but when you consider 12,000 gold divided by the hour mark gives us 200 gold per minute, against 10,000 gold divided by 90 minutes gives us only 111 gold a minute, almost half as much. We're not even factoring in travel time for that. Now this is not a bad bit of farming, but it feels like it was inflated for clicks, which is something we all fall into. I'm not going to lie, that is the nature of YouTube. 5,000 gold for 30 minutes doing the LFM open world is good. But it doesn't get you the big views, doesn't get you the clicks when you can do these hyper-inflated clickbait titles. When you look at 30 minutes of 5,000 gold, plus getting your Mr. Pandaria Nazoth dailies done, as we said before, that's smart. I would maybe throw in Mog Vaults into that, because you've got the chance of the really nice Astral Serpent mount. Now that is me done, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I hope this was beneficial. I hope this was insightful for you. Let's have a look at some of these. I always enjoy doing these breakdowns, looking at the, the current buzz ways of getting so much gold, and then actually breaking them down and looking at them in a constructive, reasonable manner. But yes, that is me done, ladies and gentlemen. Have an amazing weekend. I'll catch you all Monday where we will have the 30-minute challenge conclusion summary roundup video. And we'll look at the mage and the warrior. But until that time, have a good one and enjoy the news. Essences are going account-wide. Thank you, Blizzard. Have a great one, everybody.